<laughs> Noah, I, what was that like? Dude, I probably wouldn't call him dude. <laughs> but I, that's just how I think. I mean, wow. I mean, you preached for a hundred years and you didn't have one convert. You'd have never been asked to speak at a pastor's conference back then. <laughs> I mean, your church started with eight people, and a hundred years later, you grew it to eight people, and they were all your family. <laughs> what a failure you were. Could you imagine? Here's this preacher preaching end times prophecy, standing up there. Here he's got this huge, what is that, behind him? And he's saying, it's going to rain. Do you know they had never seen rain before? It's not in the text, but I wonder, did, what, did they ridicule? I could just hear the Noah jokes now. How many Noahs does it take to change a light bulb? You know, <laughs> but could you imagine them ridiculing him and asking him, hey, Noah, it's going to rain, huh? Yeah. Hey, Noah, what's rain? They had never seen rain. And I'm building a boat because it's going to rain and there's going to be a flood. And the only way for you to be saved is to get into that boat, into that ark, a picture of Christ. The only way you and I can get saved is to get into the ark, get into Christ, because that's where only you'll find salvation. And here they are. Year one goes by, year 10 goes by. Your 50 goes by, and here's Noah, bless his heart, trying to explain what rain is. Well, it's water, uh, and it comes down in, in drops, and like lots of them. And it's going to be for like 40 days and 40 nights, because God's going to judge the world because of the wickedness. And unless you're in the ark, you will not be saved. Okay, Noah, that's great. That's great. You're 75. Year 100. Is he still out there building that ark? Yeah, he's almost done. What a stupid idiot he is. Talking about something that we is so bizarre, so off the charts, so weird, so fanatic. Do you realize that so too, is that how they see you when you believe in the rapture? I mean, think about how bizarre this is. In the twinkling of an eye, not a blink, a twinkling, a, a, a immeasurable, for all intents and purposes, a span of time, like the sparkle of an eye, that fast. We're going to put off incorruptible, uh, uh, pardon me, we're going to put off corruptible, <laughs> thank God, <laughs> put on incorruptible. In other words, these bodies, as aged as they are, decaying day by day, <laughs> are going to be gone and transformed in the twinkling of an eye. We're going to be given our eternal bodies. And that is as strange to people. When you start talking to people about this mass disappearance of true born-again Christians from the face of the earth, uh, they look at you probably the same way they looked at Noah. You are out of your mind you are a weirdo. You are a psycho. Well, what about when the rain started falling? What about when it started flooding? What do we read about those people that called Noah a stupid idiot, ridiculing him, mocking him, because he preached as a preacher of righteousness, end times prophecy? It's too late. You can bang on the doors of that ark until your knuckles are bloodied. The door's been shut. You didn't listen. And you weren't ready. Well, I'm looking at that clock and it's demon possessed that clock is actually. It's, uh, <laughs> Suffice it to say, we won't get into our study in the book of Acts, which is okay, actually. There's a, 
Lord willing, next week we'll talk about um, what the Apostle Paul is uh, up against. It's really a profound teaching. I've been looking forward to our study in the Acts, in Acts today. But maybe this is a prophetic message for the hour that needs to be not only heard but heeded by some, maybe, maybe many here today. Uh, when, I, when I see what's taking place, I am left with no other alternative but to conclude that exactly as God's word said it would be, it's coming to pass. And it's not just for the sake of, you know, God in heaven saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have these prophecies and I just want you to really be blown away. Uh, I'm more accurate than Nostradamus. It's not just for the sake of prophecy. Now, there's a reason I want to talk about that in the remaining time that we have. But on Thursday, the, the blow to, quote, global arrogance from Ahmadinejad, well, it's that now they're a nuclear state. Uh, again, Joel Rosenberg uh, uh, reported on this on his blog uh, site that uh, Ahmadinejad announced Thursday morning that Iran now is a nuclear state. He says, he spoke as tens of thousands of people took to the streets in Tehran to mark the 31st anniversary of the Islamic Revolution. There are fears of violence as op opposition and pro-government supporters are expected to meet at rallies in a show of popular strength unmatched since the revolution itself, for those of you who might remember. Today, Ahmadinejad told scores of cheering Iranians that the Islamic Republic is capable of producing weapons-grade uranium. Everything is going perfectly according to God's prophetic plan. Enter Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 5. Persia, Iran, changing their name to Iran. The, by the way, just a little side note. I looked, I looked this up. I'm sort of still researching it. Unless somebody has proof to the contrary. Did you know what Iran means? Land of the Aryans. Iran, Aryan. Again, don't take my word for it. In fact, if you find that that's incorrect, I'd be uh, very uh, grateful to you if you would uh, show me. But that's where, uh, and that's what Iran means. In other words, Iran is hell-bent, demonically, satanically, on the destruction of the nation Israel. Don't you find it odd that throughout history, from the beginning of time, starting with Adam and Eve, that Lucifer, Satan, the serpent, has always sought to destroy the remnant, the seed of the woman, God's chosen people, the Jews. Well, think about this. I mean, th if anything, this should validate that not only that there is a God, because again, all you have to do is look at Israel because of the God of Israel. And that's the validation right there. It's not the Arabs. It's not my people. <laughs> It's not the Japanese, it's not the Chinese, it's not the, you fill in the blank, it's the Jews. It's the, it's the nation Israel. This is why Cain was possessed by Satan to kill his brother Abel. Lucifer, Satan, thought that's where the seed would come. That's from whom the Savior would come. No, it didn't come from Abel, it came from Seth. Now, if you look at the... Uh, uh, the uh, uh, lineage of Seth, you'll find in there uh, Eber, and that's from where we get Ibaru. Uh, see, Seth was the Semites. That's why when you hear of someone who is anti-Israel, you'll uh, hear them called an anti-Semitic, the descendants of uh, Shem. Uh, I, did I say Seth? I didn't mean to say Seth. Remember now, after the flood, you had Shem, Ham, and Japheth. See, Shem became uh, the father of Eber, who was the Eberus. And Shem were, were known as the Semites, you see. Now, if you trace it, and of course we're not going to do that uh, today <laughs> uh, for a number of reasons, not the least of which we don't have time, but if you really go back through the history and this is something we might talk about on the 28th. Persia has always been against Israel. By the way, if you want, read the book of Esther. 